In this video, you're going to install MongoDB on your machine that's going to allow you to actually start up the MongoDB server and connect to it from Node.js. Now, this video is for Mac and Linux users only. If you're on Windows, I've created a separate installation video for you. That's the next one. So you can stop watching now and jump over to the next video if you're on Windows. If you're still watching this one, I'm gonna assume you're running on either Mac or Linux, and we're gonna work through the installation process. You can grab MongoDB by heading over to Get MongoDB. Now from here, there are a lot of different things we can download. We have cloud options, server, and tools. We wanna grab a server that we can actually run on our machine, and there are two options here the community server or the enterprise server. We're gonna be using the community server, which is the free version of MongoDB. We'll be able to get up and running on our machines. Down below, before we can download, there are three things we can pick, version, OS, and package. Now right here, you wanna pick the current release, even if that's greater than what you're seeing for me. So the current release right now is 4.0.4, .0 .4. If you're seeing a more current release, you wanna grab that as I'll be updating the videos to account for any changes. Next up is the OS. So for Mac users, you wanna stick with Mac OS and you wanna grab the TGZ archive of all of the MongoDB files. If you're running on Linux, you wanna change the OS. You can see a bunch of different distributions listed here. So as an example, if you were running on the latest Ubuntu 18.04, you could grab that here, then you can pick your package. Now for Mac, the only option you had was the TGZ archive. For Ubuntu and other Linux distributions, you're gonna have other options. You wanna switch that over to TGZ to get everything working correctly. So if you're on Linux, this is what you want. I'm gonna switch over to Mac to actually grab the archive for myself. I don't have MongoDB installed. We're gonna work through the process together as it's a more manual setup than something like Node.js where we have a nice wizard. The installer walks us through all the steps. With MongoDB, there's a little manual work that needs to be done to get everything up and running. Once the download is complete, you wanna go ahead and crack open the Finder on Mac or your File Explorer on Linux and navigate over to the Downloads directory. Here we have our archive, and I can double click that to extract its contents. What's inside of there is what we need to actually manage our MongoDB server. So in here, we have a bin directory. The bin directory contains a bunch of executables which we can use to perform various tasks. The main one is MongoD, which we can use to start up the Mongo database server. So before we actually run this executable, we wanna take this directory and move it to a more permanent place on our machines. I don't know about you, but for me, the downloads folder is basically a temporary directory that gets deleted every few days or so. So we wanna move this to a place where it can live long-term. Before I move it, I'm gonna update the name of this directory. Right now it contains a lot of additional unnecessary information. All I'm going to do is rename this folder from what it currently is, just over to something simple like MongoDB. Now from here, what we wanna do is put this somewhere permanent and a great place to put it is the user folder on your machine. I'm gonna crack open another finder window. I'll navigate over to the user directory and from here, I'm going to take that MongoDB folder, move it out of the downloads directory and move it into its more permanent location. Now, once it's over here, we're almost ready to start up the server. The next thing we need to do is create a place for our data to be stored. Now, by default, MongoDB expects you to create a data directory at the root of your hard drive, and in there, it expects a DB directory. That's not ideal for many users as you're gonna run into a ton of different permissions errors. It's much better to create a directory inside of your user folder to store the data. So right here, I'm going to create a new directory in the same folder where I have MongoDB, and I'll call this MongoDB hyphen data. So I have MongoDB, which contains the executables necessary to actually start things up and manage our database. And I have MongoDB hyphen data, which is currently empty, but which will shortly start to contain our database's data. 
Now that we have both of these in place, we're ready to actually start up the database, and we do that by running a single command from the terminal. For me, I'm gonna navigate back over to Visual Studio Code, and from the terminal, we are going to run one of the executables in that bin directory. Now, if you put the directory somewhere else on your machine, your command is gonna look a bit different. To start, we need to get the path to our user directory. Now, if you already know that, you can simply type it out. If you don't know it, you can run cd space tilde to navigate to your user folder. And from there, you can use pwd to print the current working directory. When you run that command, it's going to spit out a path, and this is something we're going to use in the command to start up MongoDB. So to kick things off, we have to list out the path to the executable. So for me, it is forward slash users, forward slash Andrew, which is exactly what I got right here. Then forward slash MongoDB, which is the name I picked for my directory, forward slash bin, forward slash MongoD. Then we use the DB path argument to provide a path to that data folder we created. So that would be once again, forward slash users, forward slash Andrew, then forward slash MongoDB hyphen data. So this is the complete command for me. Make sure to just swap out the beginning portion with whatever you got from PWD when you were running that command from your user folder. Now, when I kick this off, we're gonna get a ton of output as it initializes the database and gets the database up and running. Right here, I'll hit enter to run the command. We have all sorts of output as it starts itself up. And we can see that after all of that happens, it's just sitting and waiting. The server is up and running, and now it's waiting for connections to the database where the connector can read and write from the database, adding documents, querying documents, updating documents, or deleting them. Now, if we go back over to the finder, we can see the MongoDB data directory now has a ton of information inside of there. This is all just to initialize things. There are no actual documents as we haven't created any just yet but we now do indeed have the server downloaded on our machine and we know the command we can use to get the server up and running. One thing worth pointing out from the output comes maybe eight or so lines before the end. Right here, we have the following message, waiting for connections on port 27017. This is letting you know that your MongoDB database is up and running and this is just the default port that MongoDB uses. Now that the database is up and running, you can connect to it from Node.js to start reading and writing data. Now the next video is the MongoDB installation video for Windows users, so you can skip that and move on to the following video, which is the video where you'll actually connect from Node. I'm excited to get to it, so stay tuned and I'll see you soon.